Tim Berners-Lee was born in London on June 8, 1955. He followed in his parents' footsteps. Both Mary Lee Woods and Conway Berners-Lee were computer scientists. They worked on the team that developed the Ferranti Mark I, the first commercially available general-purpose electronic computer. Tim Berners-Lee credits his parents with sparking his passion for computers. By the way, as a child Berners-Lee loved playing with his model railway. That's how he first learned about electronics. After finishing a bachelor's degree in physics at Oxford University, Tim Berners-Lee worked for a telecommunication company. He also developed a typesetting software for printers. In 1980, Berners-Lee worked as an independent contractor for CERN, the European Council for Nuclear Research. CERN is one of the most renowned scientific research organizations and it's the place where Berners-Lee had the idea of a lifetime. At CERN, scientists from different universities all around the world would bring their own computer systems, creating a very heterogeneous environment which made scientific collaboration difficult. The idea to have just one information management system accessible to all scientists working at CERN is what inspired Berners-Lee. On March the 12th, 1989, Berners-Lee proposed an informative management system that combined three different ideas. Hypertext is a system of interconnected texts that are displayed on computer screens. With so-called hyperlinks, a user can get from one text to the next by simply clicking on a link. The transmission control protocol is also called TCP and is a kind of online transport system. Using a network of IP addresses, the TCP makes sure that the data gets from one point to the other. Before the actual data transfer, a connection between client and server is established. And last but not least, the domain name system. With the DNS, every computer and server that is connected to the Internet gets a domain name assigned. For example, google.com. Every domain also has a unique IP address. In combination, these three systems made it possible for computer users to not just look at one website, but to explore a whole system of different websites. On August the 6th, 1991, the technological revolution began. The very first website, info.cern.ch, went online and marked the birth of the World Wide Web. So, the Internet is a global network of computers that can communicate with each other. The idea started in the 1960s, when government researchers were trying to find a way to share information. This resulted in the ARPANET, an early version of the Internet used by the US Defense Department and some academic and research organizations. Access was very limited, and this is what Tim Berners-Lee changed. The World Wide Web is the application using the Internet. The web turned the internet into a network that could now be accessed by the public. By the way, Tim Berners-Lee is actually Sir Tim Berners-Lee, because Queen Elizabeth II knighted him in 2004 for his services to the global development of the internet. On the very first website, Tim Berners-Lee states the purpose he had in mind. The World Wide Web was meant to give universal access to a large universe of documents. So, the fact that some countries restrict their people from accessing the web isn't really part of the plan. To promote his vision, Tim Berners-Lee launched the World Wide Web Foundation together with his wife Rosemary Leith in 2009. The foundation's aim is to promote the Internet as a basic right and public good. What an honorable approach. Of course, Berners-Lee has made a bit of money off the web. In 2021, he sold the web's original source code as an NFT at an auction at Sotheby's for 5.4 million US dollars. Berners-Lee is an advocate for open data and net neutrality, meaning that internet providers have to treat all internet traffic the same way. When it comes to creating the web of the future, Berners-Lee says there are many things to consider. While the web has created opportunity, given marginalized groups a voice and made our daily lives easier, it has also created opportunity for scammers, given a voice to those who spread hatred and made all kinds of crime easier to commit. Even though Tim Berners-Lee is working towards a better web for all of us, he's also not entirely unhappy with the internet we know today. Every year on the anniversary of his creation, he writes an open letter. In 2019, he wrote this. It's understandable that many people feel afraid and unsure if the web is really a force for good. But given how much the web has changed in the past 30 years, 
it would be defeatist and unimaginative to assume that the web as we know it can't be changed for the better in the next 30. If we give up on building a better web now, then the web will not have failed us, we will have failed the web. So for Tim Berners-Lee, creating the web is far from over. What do you think? Is the web promoting good or bad causes, or both? Let us know what you think in the comments.